everyone, so this is a uh, quick concept video. So, what I spent the day working on was a uh, threaded version of the content loading. So, an issue with the previous, uh, with the non threaded version is that when you have a large set of uh, images, for instance, I specifically threaded the font um, loading code uh, before if you had a large. Uh, font set such as like this one which is a Chinese font so it has about 13,000 characters which is 20 uh, stored in over 25 font files or font images loading all 25 on the same thread as the main application eats up the eats up the application thread so um, to showcase this uh, if I run it you'll see white for a decent amount of time, that's about three, four, five seconds of of white until you actually see it rendering. Um, now the threaded version, which I'll show, is different. In that basically, when I tell the font loader to load, it will not block the app main application. So see, it comes up right away. But as you could see, let me do it, run it again. Um, the text will pop in once it's actually done. So basically, the content streaming. The, this is the concept of streaming content, which most um, modern game engines implement in some form. Uh, that way, you don't actually have like loading screens where you get, you pop up a, a screen for a second, and then basically during that time on the same thread you're, you're loading content. Multi-threading it just allows you to basically play the game as content's being loaded. So let's look at the code for this. So I created this test class which is you know a font, a font loader I called it but basically it's just um, a class to encapsulate the uh, threaded code. Um, load is the main function and this isn't really extensible at the moment, but it was just sort of a proof of concept. Um, what I load is the specific font, which I said here. You know, it's a large font set. Uh, font font set. Um, and here's the actual thread. So what I pass to the thread is basically a uh, vector of font objects, point pointers, um, that I'm going to actually be storing in, uh, creating fonts and putting into that that uh, font vector a uh, font pointer um, that's actually probably not necessary but uh, just it's there right now um, it's just something I temporarily store the new font object into in this atomic uh, bool um, now I'll explain that in a second but basically in here I get this path I create the font object I get the texture path um, it's really basically uh, actually yeah this is essentially where each um, texture is located and then uh, what I do in here is I load the actual bitmaps now the this loads free image bitmaps it doesn't actually create OpenGL textures because the issue with doing that is if you create any OpenGL states on a temporary thread when that thread goes out of scope or gets deleted all the OpenGL states are basically corrupt or deleted as well so the nothing will render basically you'll have all the information but all the OpenGL states will have disappeared so we do that later um, but basically I load all the information the raw information and then once it's done loading I set finish to true that's that atomic uh, boolean the thing about threads is basically detached threads or asynchronous threads you don't really have uh, control there's no easy way to um, find out whether or not the uh, thread's finished because it just will silently destroy itself once it's done. Um, so inside the thread you have to actually manage um, or, or set a value that basically determines when the thread is done. So now this this is a lambda function that's passed. These are actually the, um, the parameters that get passed in. So this is a reference to that uh, font the thing about using um, standard, the standard thread object is if you do pass uh, any references you need to pass it as a, a standard ref not a um, 
not just as its own ref reference. Uh, this is that pointer to the font. I could probably remove that, but and this is a uh, memory address of that atomic pool. And here we just call it detach, which will run run the uh, basically run the thread asynchronously, which will allow the main thread to execute. Um, so, and this will return is finished. Um, so the way, the reason, let me go back to the, uh, when I explained how the OpenGL textures can't be created, because they can't be created in this thread, um, the font object itself that I create actually has a new function that I added, which is called init textures. And what will happen is when, once the, the uh, fonts are all loaded, if I go to render them, which is done down here, so I check to see if the font loader's finished. This is clearly kind of hacked together. I mean, this is honest, honestly, you wouldn't be doing this in render. Um, you'd probably uh, have a, some system where you know for a fact that the um, uh, all the content's been loaded. Um, but you basically, we, I get the font, and then if the font exists, it's just a extra check. Um, I go to render. Now inside here though, I do, I check to see if the font's been initialized. So if it's not initialized, I do the initial uh, OpenGL state um, initialization. So this will create all the, the actual GL texture uh, handles. Um, and then we're ready to render. Um, so all that put together basically gives me this. Um, so yeah, now of course uh, one of the new features of the Visual Studio I'm using actually has a um, a tracks the memory usage of your application. As you can see, this is quite a bit, 72.4 megabytes. So clearly, this some memory leaks I have to get rid of. And you can actually see if I run this, you can see it go up from 40.5 or 45 to 70, and that's when it actually loads all the uh, bitmap images. So. Generally, you don't want to load 25 large uh, 512 by 512 images um, into memory if you don't know that you're absolutely going to use them all. Um, but thanks for watching this video. Um, I'm going to do actually a video soon about the new um, Visual Studio 2015 tools, such as the GitHub integration and the uh, and the diff and merge tools um, that used to be part of Team Foundation's server and still are, but uh, now you can use them with GitHub. So stay tuned for more.